being here with technology versus being in there with technology. So I've had to readjust all the slides this morning so the words are actually on there. And so we've had to work with cords and everything else. So let's hope this goes well. I was about to break out the kids' Bible here to read scripture from because it's on my screen. <laughs> How are you this morning? I'm glad to see you. Here we got our college kiddos back, Skyler and Nick. So glad to see them. School going okay, Mr. Jim? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All right. So, well, I'm glad that you're here. Words of welcome, welcome, welcome. I've got rural refreshers for us. Please wear your mask at all times, unless you're performing or at a good distance from everyone. Uh, please remain seated. And a reminder to Silas, don't move your seat because they're all spaced out. And please be mindful as you come in, as you leave, as you, if you have to go to the restroom, wherever you might be in the room, just be mindful of safe distancing from others. Everybody's good with that? Okay. The new norm we must deal with, right? Good morning. This is the toughest thing. I can't even hug Caroline. Sweet little Caroline. <laughs> I'm so glad that each one of you are here. We're here to worship God. We're going to have a great service today. And so I pray that um, you are comfortable and um, ready to worship. Are we ready? All right. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Holy and loving God. We are abundantly grateful for the beauty of this Sunday, though it is raining. We are grateful to receive the rain, which helps everything to grow, and we are grateful, Lord, for this opportunity to be together this morning as a church family in your house. And we are grateful to be here to be able to worship you and praise you. You are our all in all, our everything, and we live and move and have our being in you. We are humbled by your love for us, and we praise you for your unwavering devotion to our well-being. As we worship you this morning, Lord, we ask that you would join us in this space by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, and that you would quicken our hearts to hear what you have to say to us today. We also ask that you would draw near to all of those who are suffering, whether from COVID-19, the aftermath, the recent hurricane and tornadoes, other sicknesses, grief, or loss, or struggle of any kind, Lord, draw near to those who are in need and suffering, Lord. We ask that you would be with them and send angels of mercy to their side to aid them in their time of need. Lead us and guide us, we pray, and help us to become better and better disciples all the days of our lives. These things we pray in the precious name of Christ. Amen. Amen. So if you would stand with me. Hey, guys. If you stand with me, we're going to start off this morning by getting our blood moving a little bit and singing, this is the day, all right? And we're going to be into it, yeah? All right. Lord on my side, 
Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. And now, men. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, my Savior pray. I bow down before your holy temple, and give you thanks to your name. We are steadfast love in your holy place. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I call to you, you answered me. You increased my strength to soul. The Lord has fulfilled his purposes. Indeed, and everyone make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. That's a lot of praise to God. While you're standing, I want us to share the peace of Christ with one another in our new normal. And so that might involve you waving at people that you haven't seen in a while, or throwing kisses in the air, or giving air hugs, or just smiling at somebody or blessing them, something like that. So just turn and sort of look around and greet one another and tell them you're glad to see them. And we're glad to have the peace of Christ with us. Zay says, how will people know if we're smiling at them? <laughs> I believe it's in the eyes, don't you? I believe it is in the eyes. When we do our passing of the peace in this new normal, I would ask that you just try to stay by your seat so that we're not infringing on one another's distance, but that we just share love however we can, because I want us to still be able to greet one another and share the peace of Christ. You may be seated. As we mentioned last time, if you weren't here last Sunday, uh, our offering time is also going to go a little bit differently. The offering plates are placed at the entrances slash exits, and so you can leave your offerings as you come and as you go. Um, but So we will pray each time over the offering and sing the doxology as a way to thank God for our, for our ability and our opportunity to give, and, um, and then we'll move on from there. You can just leave your giving as you go. So let us pray over our offering today. Gracious and mighty God, we come before your throne of grace this morning to offer our best to you in worship, in giving, in prayer, and in the offering of our hearts to you. Thank you, Lord, for all our many blessings that come only from you, and thank you, Lord, for the unbelievable gift of your saving grace. We know that we cannot outgive you, Lord, but we come this morning to give our gifts and to give ourselves in hopes that they are an acceptable sacrifice in your sight. Lord, please bless these gifts we bring that they might bring glory to your holy name and enable us to shine your light into the world around us better and better. We love you, Lord, and we pray in your holy name.
lot of things to manage up here. I'm so uh, thankful that y'all did that. That was beautiful. And I love this image that you put forth at the beginning about it sort of being encircling in us, encircling us in prayer as you did it in round. So that's beautiful. Thank you for that. So today's message is entitled, Will You Sing or Thud? If you're a Max Lucado fan, you may be familiar with this concept of will you sing or thud. So this is Mr. Charlie and Wesley. <laughs> but that's Mr. Charlie. Uh, Mr. Charlie was the lay leader in the first church that I was ever appointed to serve in Bismarck. And he was an absolute positive blessing. In mine and Dustin's life. I don't know that I've been so blessed by a man's presence in my life that's not kin to me ever. A precious soul he was. In fact, the day that we buried Mr. Charlie, Dustin and I decided that if we ever were to have biological children of our own, a child of our own, boy or girl, we would name that child Charlie, regardless of gender. Um, because we loved and treasured this man so much. And I was cleaning out some old emails in my inbox this week. And um, a lot of them, most of them are current emails, and I was cleaning out the junk. But at the bottom of my email, one of my email addresses, there are emails from Mr. Charlie, my mom, my dad, and my granddad, because I just can't ever bring myself to delete them. And I was looking through some of them from Mr. Charlie, because he always sent me really good emails. And one of them was a devotional. He was part, though we, we lived in Bismarck, he was part of a Bible study in Hot Springs with some men that he golfed with. And they were studying this Max Lucado book together called Shaped by God. And that, met, that um, chapter that they studied that day touched Mr. Charlie so much. And it reminded him of, a, of some message I had preached the previous Sunday. And so he sent me a clip from this devotional in this email. And I found it this week. And I thought, that is what I want to share uh, with the church this morning. So, uh, before I read the devotional, I want to share with you the scripture verse that it's based upon. It's Luke 6, verse 45. And I have it in two translations um, because I like them both so much. So this is the New International Version. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Now, I want you to just look at that for a second. I'm going to give you a few seconds of silence. I want you to read that again and ponder that scripture. And now we're going to read from the message. Y'all know I love the message. You don't get wormy apples off a healthy tree, nor do good apples off, nor good apples off of a diseased tree. The health of the apple tells the health of the tree. Your true being brims over into your words and deeds. Now take a second to think about that one. Don't get wormy apples off a healthy tree. Or healthy apples off a diseased tree. I love that. So here's the devotional Mr. Charlie sent me. Again, it's by Max Lucado, um, and it's kind of rewritten for today's purposes. It says, For a potter to know if the pot he has molded and created is cooked enough and solid enough to be useful as a pot, he must first test the pot using the thumping method. The thumping method is when the potter strikes the pot with his thumb to see if it is cooked and solidified. When he, so he molds it on the wheel and shapes it just like he wants it. Then he puts it in the kiln to fire it. And when he thinks that it's fired long enough, he gets the tongs, takes it out, and thumps it. And if it is good enough and, sol and solid enough, it's good. And if the pot sings when the, when the potter thumps it, that means this, that it is ready to go and it will make a great pot. But if the pot thuds, when the potter thumps it, well, that means it's going to have to go back into the oven and cook a little while longer. Max goes on to say, we humans are a lot like the potter's pot. We, too, often get thumped to test to see if we, who have been created, crafted, and molded by the great potter, to see if we have been in the refiner's finer 
the refiner's fire long enough to come out solid and useful for the creator to use. So in that way, we are like the pot. The potter thumps the pot to check it to see if it's good and solid and useful, and the great potter thumps us from time to time to check and see if we are good and solid and useful. And then he goes on to say, and of course it's not just the great potter, it's not just God that thumps us to check and see if we're good and solid and useful. Sometimes things in our daily lives thump us, sometimes more than once in a day. And so the question becomes, do we sing or do we thud when we are thumped? And that is a good question for us to ponder. The thumps in our lives that come to us from the people in the world around us are those little Frustrating inconveniences that happen in our daily lives every single day that trigger. Sorry, Melissa, don't give me eyes next time. <laughs> when we get thumped in life by the daily world and the people around us, that's when something happens to us, some little inconvenience that triggers the worst in us to come out. Yeah? We have these things happen every day. These are the little things that happen in our lives, big and small, every single day that catch us off guard. And before we know it, we're flying off the handle or we're saying something we shouldn't say or we're kicking something or we're slapping something. It's usually a negative reaction. It's usually not a good time. These thumps are not necessarily big enough things to be crises in our life. But if enough of them happen to us in a day's time or if some of them happen to us over and over and over in rapid succession – then whoever is around us better look out, right? These are the kinds of things. Have you been thumped lately? Have you had any late night calls or phone messages or texts pop up when you're just about to drop, drift off to sleep? That can be one of those thumps that really irritates you and sets you off, right? Or have you, had, um, have you been to the store, to Harps or to Walmart, encountered a, a, a grumpy grocery clerk that really just irritates you? Or have you burned up a perfectly good casserole, a perfectly good chicken or steak? Have you had a flat tire on your way somewhere when you're already running late? Have you been stuck in traffic for a long time somewhere when you really need to be somewhere at a certain time? Have you been cut off in traffic lately? Has somebody, like what happened to me yesterday, waited to the very last minute to put on their brakes and turn their blinker on? Right? These are those little thumps that happen to us in life that if um, we're not right inside can set us off and trigger the worst in us to come out. Have you been in a long line at a grocery store or in particular in Clarksville at Sonic? The lines are so long at Sonic. Amen? Like it takes forever for them to respond to that little red button. Oh! <laughs> Have you ever spent like an hour of your kitchen after dinner, gone to take a quick bath or shower or something, and come back and find a, dish, a, di a sink full of dirty dishes that you have to do? Have you ever um, finished up all the laundry, gone to take a quick nap or something, and you come back and there's more laundry to do? These are those little thumps in life that can bring out the worst in us. These are the kinds of things that are thrown our way. And when you're thumped, the question is, how do you respond? How do I respond? When I receive one of these daily life kinds of thumps, do we sing or do we thud? Do we react with patience, gentleness, kindness, compassion, endurance, and a try again attitude? Or impatience, irritability, harsh words, frustration, having a fit, throwing our hands up and walking out? Do we sing or do we thud? When we push the red button at Sonic. <laughs> Max Locato writes, how we respond to those daily life kinds of thumps, whether we sing or thud, says a lot about our character, our internal spirit, our rootedness in Christ, and the depth to which we have allowed the creator, the great potter, to shape us and mold us from the inside out. And the depths to which we have allowed the great potter to refine us in this refining fire. Like our scripture verse says, you won't get wormy apples off a healthy tree, nor will you get good apples off a diseased tree. Our true being brings out over into words and deeds. The more our true character and inner being are shaped by God and aligned with God, the more we will sing when thumped. But you don't just get thumped by the button at Sonic or the guy that puts on his bricks at the last minute in front of you. 
You also can get thumped by God. I have some pictures of this. Think about this is Silas and um, Paul in prison. I don't know how well you can see that picture. But just think about it. They were thumped when they were out preaching the word of God, doing what God wanted them to do. And where did they end up? Prison. Right? So they got thumped by God. Have you ever been praying and felt like you've been thumped by God? Because in your prayer time, you're giving thanks and you're singing God's praises and you're doing all this in your prayer time. But then all of a sudden, you just can't stop this thought from reoccurring in the back of your head about something you need to do, something you need to clean up in your behavior or your attitude or whatever. And it won't leave. God is thumping you. Um, when you're trying to, all you're trying to do is give thanks, and he just keeps reminding you of what you're not doing, right? <laughs> or have you ever been thumped to give? You see somebody on the side of the road, you see a friend in need, and that little thump comes from God to remind you that you're to be charitable and help people in their time of need. Or have you ever been talking to a friend, having a conversation with a friend, and that friend brings up something to you because that you know you trust one another, and that friend brings something up to you that says, you know, man, I, I just have seen you do this, this, or this a couple of times, and I don't really feel like that's in line with who you're supposed to be or whatever. That could be a thump from God. God could have been sending that friend to encourage you in that way, um, to shape up something in your life. Have you ever been studying the Bible? And it's literally almost as if some words are highlighted and jump out at you. Because your soul needs to hear them. They need to convict you of something that you need to shape up in your life. Have you ever been thumped by God because you're carrying resentment and God wants you to forget? Have you ever been thumped by God because your priorities are all out of whack? And he's trying to tell you, make time for what's important. Stop doing all this, spending all this time doing this. Spend time with me, with your family, whatever it might be. And the, and the question is, just like the other time, when you're thumped by God, how do you respond? Do you sing or do you thud? Do you praise God like Silas and Paul did in the prison when they started singing the hymns? Or do you complain about, oh my gosh, why are we in prison? We were just doing what we were supposed to do. Right? Do you listen to your friend's advice or do you ignore it? Do you give to the person in need or do you hold back? Do you make the change the Bible or your prayer time is suggesting or do you refuse? Do you hit your reset button on your priorities or do you just keep living life the way you always live it and stay overly busy and refuse to change? When God thumps you, how do you respond? Do you sing or do you thud? Max Locato says, if we hang out in the thud category in terms of how we respond or react to God's thumps, we might just find ourselves back in the fire for a little while longer so the refiner can continue to purify us. Being put back in the fire is God's way of helping us to become who we were created, shaped, and molded to be on that potter's wheel. So that's one way God might respond if we thud when he thumps us. And yet at the same time, is it entirely possible, he says, for God to thump us and then, and by putting us in particular situations, for example, Silas and Paul, right? They got a thud, I mean a thump, but they didn't get a thump because they were doing something wrong and God needed them to clean up. They got a thump because people inside that jail needed to know what Silas and Paul knew. Because they were a good, solid, useful vessel, God thumped them and put them in a situation where they could pour out God's mercy and blessings into someone else's life. So what is it going to be? That is the question before us today in today's devotional. Will we sing or will we thud? And obviously if our desire is to sing, how are we going to get better at singing? What are we going to do on each and every day that increases the likelihood that we are going to sing in our reactions to the thumps of life versus thud? So my closing um, sentiment today, closing prayer for us, is that we may be a people who sing in the shadowy times and spaces of our lives. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for words of wisdom and words that challenge us like thee. We all likely thud way too often as children of the light. And so, Lord, we ask you today, we earnestly pray 
that you would shine your light into us, shape us and mold us, send the people and the thumps our way that we need to encourage us, Lord, to sing and to sing and to sing more and more for you, for your glory, and so that your purposes in this life might be accomplished. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Anybody ever heard that sentiment about the singing in the thing? Yeah. I've read a fair amount of Max Lucado, but it must have been so long that I had forgotten about that. And when I read Charlie's email, I thought, that is just a great thing for us to think about. Because right now, we're probably all so stressed to the max. Maybe not as stressed as we were at the beginning of this pandemic when we didn't know so much, but now um, life is kind of rolling back into full swing, and yet we're still dealing with the pandemic, still dealing with the mask, still dealing with the distances, not being able to get our hugs, not being able to see everybody we want to see, not being able to visit people in nursing homes and hospitals and all that, and it's so stressful, right? And all of those stressors can be these little thumps in life. And so I just thought, what a timely message for us to pray and focus our hearts and minds on how we react to those thumps. Why don't we stand together and sing our benediction hymn? Send us out to be your disciples, this we pray in Christ's name.